ဥရိယစံဘိုချင်းနဲ့စစ်စပြီးတော့အပြီးနေလို့မြောက်ပြီးတော့ထူးချာချာကြီးမကလေးတွေကောင်းလာတယ်ဟုတ်ကဒီစ
Samahito Yata Bhutang Pajanati. When when one's mind is concentrated, then one sees things as they are. At this time, Kanika Samadhi, momentary concentration, becomes good because it has momentum. And starting with the rising and the falling, as soon as the object arises, the mind falls collectively on that object, and it falls collectively on the end of the object also. So when there's, when stiffness arises or tension or movement, the mind falls collectively on this stiffness, tension or movement and all other objects too. As soon as the object arises, the mind falls collectively on it. And also the mind falls collectively on the ending of the object. So at this point, the samadhi is very good. And the Buddha used the word chete kagata. This, um, this type of samadhi is that of the bhavana mind falling collectively on a single object. This is kanika samadhi. And it falls collectively on every new arising object. So I can't recite the Pali that Sayadoji recited, but it's a passage about Kanika Samadhi. And it uses the word Sopi. This Samadhi also. This text indicates that This type of kanika samadhi is not the samadhi of absorption of apana, but it too falls collectively on the object without a break. So in the body, with every newly arising object, whether it's mind or matter, for example, with matter there may be hardness or softness, there may be flowing, or solidity, stickiness, heat, cold, warmth, lightness, stiffness, tension, movement, shaking. And as far as mental qualities, there's seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, thinking. There's seeing consciousness, sorry, seeing contact, hearing contact, smelling, tasting, touching, contact. And then there's the uh, sense of that it's good to see the, the feeling that exists at the time of seeing, that it's good to see, good to hear, good to smell, taste, touch, and so on. These are the things which the object is to observe. These are observable objects. And the mind falls on the arising object both at the start and at the end. And so the yogi sees the start of the object, the end of the object, and also the mind sees that the mind goes away. So this is called pati vipassana. One day, vipassana is to see the ending of the object. But with pati vipassana, not only the, one sees the object disappearing, but one, but one also observes that the mind disappears, the mind that observes the object. And at the stage of Uddhya this is very clear. So it is said, avikepo samadhi, that is that the mind doesn't scatter, but it, it falls collectively on the object. And it's collected just on one object. It, stay, it stays there, sticks there. Samadhi functions to collect the mind and the mind states that occur with it on the object. So therefore the mind falls collectively. It's all gathered together on a single object, on every arising object. And how it appears to the yogi is that it appears 
Uh, calmness is what appears. It, pe- it appears to be stable. So, at the start of the, at the stage of Udhyabhyanyana, this kind of samadhi arises, and this samadhi is a factor of the knowledge of the path, Sambodhi. It is also a, a supporting cause of the person who comes to know path knowledge. So when this um, type of samadhi arises, then vipassana knowledge is sure to come. This samadhi is very collected, and it, it's collected moment after moment on every arising object. So it is a factor of the, path, the knowledge called uh, Sambodhi, and it is, a, it is a supporting cause of the person who comes to know this type of knowledge, path knowledge. So it is called Sambojanga. And t- together with the word Samadhi, we have Samadhi Sambojanga. In one's body, on the observable objects, that arise moment by moment, ever anew. This momentary concentration, Kanika Samadhi, it's said in Pali, Chittang Nichalang Tapeti, that it makes the, it, uh, it places the bhavana mind unshaking on the object. The bhavana mind is the mind that has been developed that is being expanded, enlarged. And so when the mind is placed in this way on the object so that it doesn't move, then the mind does not go to a com- a, an object of the senses. One by one, it, it is placed on the arising object time and again. And what it is like, it is said, apitoviya. It is like the focus of absorption. It is like uh, in the same way that in jhana, the mind falls collectively on the object. So too, the mind falls on the vipassana object. So this is what is said in the text. It means that just as one who practices absorptions, their mind is stable on an object, so too the mind of the Vipassana yogi is stable because of Kanika Samadhi on a single, on the object. But the difference is that in absorption practice, in, develop, in the jhanas, the mind is placed on a single object. There's just one object, and the mind stays on that object. Whereas here, there are various objects. There are many kinds of objects. It's every, every newly arising object is where the mind is placed. These objects are objects that are really there, and the mind is placed on the object as it happens. So this is the difference between these two types. So making the mind stable like this, making it able to observe the object one by one doesn't occur for nothing. How it occurs is described as aramane pavutamano. That means when when they're seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, at the moment of lifting, at the moment of moving, at the moment of placing, at the moment of bending, stretching, blinking, opening and closing the eyes, all these moments are the fields of observation. And within these, there are little bits to be observed that are ever new arising and little observable spots. So on every newly arising object, 
the, uh, the mind should be occurring continuously. It's described as the word pavatamano, right when the object is happening, the mind needs to be there, not after the object has happened and not before it happens. So the, it has to be, uh, this observation has to be occurring right when the object happens, and one observation must follow another without a gap. It must be continuous. So it said Narantaran, this Kanika Samadhi must be uh, happening without a break. One moment of observation has to follow another without a gap. It needs to be continuous. This samadhi only occurs if there's continuity. And how it uh, has to appear is ekakarena. It appears as though it's just a single thing. The, although the object is changing, there are many objects. The object may be seeing or hearing or smelling, tasting, touching, standing, sitting, walking, lying down. But this focus on the object occurs in the same way every time. And so it has the same, it looks, it looks as though the samadhi is seamless. There's uh, just one appearance. And only then will it make this, only when it occurs in this way, as though it's a single thing, can it make the mind, the bhavana mind, calm and stable. So the yogi's job is to make the mind occur in this way, make the samadhi occur in this way. Ekakarena, aramane, puvuttamano, to make the mind occur in the arising object as it is happening so that it seems like it's one, one, one continuous thing despite the changing objects. So when uh, at the stage of Uddhya to the extent that our observation is good, that our sati is good, then the samadhi will become very good. The object appears very quickly, and the mind falls on the start of that, as soon as that object arises, and it falls collectively also on the end of the object. There's no gap. So, sorry, this is, uh, this is not something that happens casually. It's not something that happens uh, for nothing. It is the result. Sorry, it is also not something that needs to be deliberately created. This samadhi occurring in this way is simply the result of respectful, meticulous, continuous work at trying to observe the arising object. So if one is careless, then this type of samadhi won't observe, uh, arise. If one is not respectful towards the practice, meticulous and continuous. Today, Sayadaji saw a yogi, and he doesn't know how long the yogi has been here, but the yogi was just going along as in an ordinary way, not like a yogi, just ordinary. And Sayadaji said, if there is no respect for the work being done, then uh, no matter how long one stays, if one stays, uh, if one doesn't have respect for the work, then it won't make any difference whether one is here for one month or two months. As long as one has the mind that does not value the work of Satipatthana, then there won't be respect towards the practice. And without respect towards the practice, it doesn't matter how long one, tra one practices. There won't be any difference. Mm -hmm. 
In this way, one doesn't let the mind go slack, and one also doesn't let the mind scatter. The mind is being collectedly collected onto the object. And when one sees that the mind is calm, like this, how will the yogi feel? The yogi will feel happy and delighted, clear. It's like when parents see their child graduate and get a degree. The child is no longer misbehaving. The child has become well-behaved, gained an education, and just an ordinary degree. But the child is well-behaved, this grown-up child. So the parents feel very satisfied to, to see that. When parents see a child, a son or daughter that is misbehaving, that is uh, doing the wrong things, how will parents feel satisfied? How can they feel satisfied with this? But at this point, the yogis have put energy into their minds, different types of energies, and they've uh, attained this good result. So one feels satisfaction because of the practice that one has done. And when knowledge arises, how much more so will satisfaction arise? So at this stage, the, um, at the yogi sees how the object arises. The mind is there to see the, how the object arise, arises, and it also sees how it disappears. The, the mind, the, the yogi sees how the old is continually being replaced by the new in a very quick manner. So, at, and the practice at this point, the observation is very workable. Everything is working well. And one, one's knowledge is very clear. Therefore, delight in what one is doing arises, and this is called Dhamma Rati, the delight in the Dhamma. For this to happen, this tamarati, it doesn't happen without a cause. It doesn't happen because we prayed and then some powerful being gave it to us. It didn't happen because we just sort of followed our ideas about how to do this. And it also didn't happen uh, through not coming to a place like this. Knowing the method, uh, one came to a place like this. And this place uh, qualifies as sunyagara. This place is, has very few human sounds. There are some car sounds and there are bird sounds around. But with regard to human sounds, it is relatively quiet. It is, and sonyagara means a place to live which is in, a, is in an isolated place. Santa Chetasa Yogi No. This, uh, the mind, a yogi is one who, first of all, makes the initial effort in the practice and then boosts one's level effort up a level in order to overcome laziness and then develops effort stage by stage increasingly until it reaches the goal. This is a yogi. And if one is a true yogi, then the mind doesn't shake due to lust or raga. There's no shaking of the mind due to dosa, anger. No shaking of the mind due to delusion or any other type of defilements. There's no, none, none that come, can come in and disturb the mind. So the mind is free, free of agitation and therefore it's calm. Santa Chetasa. So what the yogi does, samadhamang vipasato, the yogi observes applies the practice and comes to see things as they are. First of all, one comes to see that there is mind and matter, nama and rupa. 
And then, continuing, one comes to see how this mind and matter are related as cause and effect. Further, one comes to see the various aspects of these mind and matter which are related as cause and effect. They're not permanent. They're unsatisfactory and they have no inherent self. And further, one comes to see how they arise and pass away in a fleeting manner very, very quickly. The old continually being replaced by the new. And at this point, seeing the fleeting arising and passing away of phenomena, one will experience amanu siriti. This is a delight that is not the delight of the human world. It is not the delight of the sense pleasures that are found in the human, human world. The human world is full of sense pleasures. But this delight is something different, something far better. Because it is a delight in a single thing. Not, uh, and this type of delight, it never gets boring. It never gets old. It's one that, it's a type of delight that one won't want to let go of. One won't want to exchange it for anything else. Worldly pleasures, sense pleasures, get boring. How many times can we see a movie that we like? How many times do we go to see it? How many times can we hear a pleasant sound? How many times can we hear the same sound, this pleasant sound, without becoming bored? How many times can we smell the same fragrance without becoming bored? Or the same taste or the same touch? How, how much can we experience it before we want something else? But this delight is not like that. This delight is something that one never gets tired of, never gets bored with. So this happens when one develops the good mind and knowledge. This, uh, when this good mind and the, and the knowledge progress, then this type of unrelinquishable happiness arises. And the Buddha described it in, in the way just said above, and this type of happiness is very good. In the world, those who like pleasures, who like to enjoy things, live with a companion and, uh, so that they can enjoy things. And uh, however one gets bored in time and one replaces the companion one after another. And this is what happens. One gets bored with the, the things one experiences so we make our mind happy with one new object after another. You know, we get one, one type of thing after another in the world. But this Dhamma is not like that. At this stage, when one sees the very fast arising and passing away of phenomena, the mind experiences a special type of happiness that doesn't involve any companion. It is, a, it is a happiness that arises with the developed mind and with knowledge. And this happiness is something that when one experiences it, one doesn't want to exchange it for something else. One doesn't get tired of it. So when one has this type of happiness as one's companion, then one won't want to back off from the practice. One will only want to advance. And uh, it's as the yogi practices, the observable objects become very, very quick. And before, the yogi was able to label the objects and because of labeling the mind was able to meet exactly with the object. The mind and the object 
uh, were an exact fit. But now, when one tries to label, one doesn't have that fit anymore. The mind can't meet the object exactly. And so one finds it hard to label. So there's two ways that one can work with this situation. <clears throat> uh, one is to just label what one can. And don't worry about anything else. Just label the ones you're able to note. And the second way is to drop the labeling and just watch the, these fast objects. So this is just how one has to work at this stage in the practice. And yogis, uh, yogis at this stage who are working, uh, who were, whose practice is going well, they come into the interviews and they say, Bhante, everything is going very, very quickly and I can't keep up with the objects. I can't keep up with them. So at this point, the meditation teacher has to say, well, just know what you can. That's okay. Just know what you can. Or if that is if the person is noting and uh, if, if you're going to note and if you're just going to if you're not going to note, then just watch them. Just watch the objects without noting. If a yogi reaches this stage, if you reach this stage, just continue to practice because you will gain special dhamma for sure. This is uh, one of the factors of the, uh, the cause for knowledge, jnana, bodhi jnana, to arise, sambhojanga. If one continues to practice, then the disappearance of the object becomes more prominent than the arising. So at that time, when the disappearance is more obvious, then the happiness and the peace that one had is no longer there. One has gone past these, the happiness and the peace, the joy. And then one, what, experience, what one experiences is uh, stable samadhi. The samadhi is very stable. And, um, and then also in place of the happiness or sukha, there is upeka, equanimity. And at that time, the samadhi concentration becomes even better than it was before. And therefore, the knowledge also becomes clearer. One sees in very minute detail the object. So Sayadawji will um, talk tomorrow about how uh, from sam Samadhi Sambhojanga, uh, Upeka Sambhojanga arises. He will explain this tomorrow, and for today, this is all. Sa